Bows and loving looks we always seem. In youth we fancy we are wise, but time has shown, alas, too often and too late. We have not known the hearts of others. for you. I have spoken on your behalf to a good friend in the city, and he offers you a position in his counting house. You are too generous, sir. You must not think me ungrateful if I do not immediately accept what you propose. But I have other prospects in view. Your reluctance to seek steady employment makes me uneasy. Be assured your daughter shall not marry a poor man. So he be honest, she may take a poor husband if she choose. But I am resolved she shall never marry a lazy one. The old fool. Here I stand. My constitution sound. My frame not ill-favored, my wit ready, my heart light. I play the industrious apprentice in a copybook. I submit to the drudge's yoke. I play through a lifetime to enrich others and then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. Not I, child of the great doctor, to assure us that good works are of no avail, for heaven predestines all. In my passion, I may profess myself of their party, and here will entrust myself to fortune. Since it is not by merit we rise or we fall, but the favor of fortune that governs us all, that governs us all. Why should I labor for what in the end she will give me for nothing if she be my friend? Why, the wealth I might gain, for a time by my toil, would at last be in vain, would at last be in vain. Till I die, when of the evil, for my lightning and struck, let me live by my wit and trust to my luck and trust to You have found him straying in his thoughts and footsteps. In short, <laughs> you are here. 
<laughs> yes, surely. Tom Rakewell at your service. Well, well. Nick Shadow, sir, and at your service. For surely as you bear your name, I bear you a bright future. You recall an uncle, sir? An uncle? My parents never mentioned one. They quarreled, I believe, sir. Yet he... Sir, have you friends? More than a friend. The daughter of this house and ruler of my heart. A lover's fancy and a lovely thought. Then call her, call her. Indeed, let all who will make their joy hear of your glad tidings. Gentlemen, a servant begs your pardon for your time, but there is much to tell. Tom Rake will had an uncle, one long parted from his native land. Him I served many years. Served him in the many trades he served in turn, and all to his profit. Yes, profit was perpetually his. It was indeed his family, his friend, his hour of amusement, his life. But all his brilliant progeny of gold could not caress him when he lay dying. Sick for his home, sick for a memory, a pleasure, or of love, his thoughts were but of England. There, at least, he felt his profit could be pleasure to an eager youth. For such, by counting years upon his fumbling fingers, he knew that you must be good, sir. Well, he is dead. And I am here with this commission to tell Tom Rakewell that an unloved and forgotten man and remembered you are a rich man I wish but once I knew that surely my wish would come true that I had but to speak at last and fate would smile the time I knew, I knew, yet you bring the fateful and the questioning here by a new and grateful master side be thanked, and as my fortune and my kind remain confirmed. Even in 
the carefree mayor, driving fortune has its roots of care. Burton is crouched like gardeners to pay powers of paper, only seals be fair. We must be off to London. We can wait. No, Tom, your man is right. Things must be done. The sooner that you settle your estate, the sooner you and I can be as one. Of course, in wait is down the road. Call the coachman, sir. Should you not mind, I'll tell you of his needs, sir. You are kind. Good shadow, since born and bred in indigence, I am unacquainted with such matters. What wages you are accustomed to receive? Let us not speak of that, master, till you know better what my services are worth a year and a day hence. We will settle our account, and then I promise you, you shall pay me no more and no less than what you yourself acknowledge to be just. A fair offer, tis agreed. Oh, 
I have discharged my duties as a godfather in preparing you for the delights to which your newly found state of manhood is about to call you. So tell my lady bishop of the game what I did vow and promise in thy name. I may be no things to pursue, my duty to myself to do. Is he not apt? And handsome too. What is thy duty to thyself? To shut my ears to prudent preacher and follow nature as my teacher. What is the secret nature? What beauty is and where it grows. Canst thou define the beautiful? I can. That soars of pleasure to the eyes. You those wit snatches, money minds, and affects to scorn, but lies. 
to present to you a stranger to our rights who, following our custom, begs leave to sing you a song in earnest of his desire to be initiated. As you see, he is young. As you shall discover, he is rich. My master, uh, and if he will pardon the liberty, my friend, Mr. Tom Rakewell.
unnatural mother. I left the country, no plowman is more a slave to sun, moon, and season than a gentleman to the cloth of fashion. City, city, what Caesar could have imagined the curious viands I have tasted betook me? And let the Porto and Provence keep all their precious wines. I would as soon be dry and wrinkled as a raisin. I never taste another. Cards, living pictures. And dear God, the matrons with their valuable girls. Cover their charms and lift you well bred boards. All your goods will touch the death of the room long before they learn of the green sickness. The others, too, with their more candid charms. Ha! Who's honest, chaste, or kind? Do you know this lady, Baba the Turk? I have not visited St. Giles' Fair as yet. They say that brave warriors who never flinched at the sound of musketry have swooned after a mere glimpse of her. Is such a thing possible in nature? Two noted physicians have sworn that she is no imposter. Will you go see her? Nick, I know that manner of yours. You have some skill of it. Come, sir, out with it. Consider her picture. Would you see me turn to stone? Do you desire her? Like the gout or the falling sickness. Are you obliged to her? Heaven forbid. Then marry her. Have you taken leave of your senses? I was never saner. Come, master, observe. 
observe the host of mankind. How are they wretched? Why? Because they are not free. Why? Because the giddy multitude are driven by the unpredictable mass of their pleasures. And the sober few are bound by the inflexible oath of their duty. Between which favoris there is nothing to choose. Would you be happy then and to act freely? Would you act freely then and to ignore those twin tyrants of appetite and conscience? Therefore, I counsel you, master, take Baba the Turk to wife. Consider her picture once more, and as you do so, reflect upon my words. Pursues the fair evasive day. Then caught in colder fetters wounds, wealth was his for a man. Till both disarmed, sick, downcast, and failing in his wits. In virtue's narrow cell, at last the will that bonds men sits. That man, that man alone, that man alone, his faithful fears. What to win and wins his choice as destiny. Though I his future can foretell, no law his past explain, whom neither passion may compel, no. Can well,
I was saying both brothers wore moustaches, but Sir John was told that they gave me the musical glasses that was in Vienna. No, it must have been Milan because of the donkeys. Vienna was the Chinese fan. No, was it the bottle of water from the river Jordan? I'm certain at least it was Vienna and Lord Gordon. I get so confused about all my travels. The stuff boxes came from Paris and the full of Venus crabs from Bacardi. You know who admired me vastly in Rome. You're not eating my love. <laughs> Count Walter gave me the number of bits of one lots in the little statues of the twelve apostles, which I like best of all my treasures, except my fossils, which remind me I must have rigid never to touch the mummies. I'll dust them myself, shake and blow the wax with dummies. Oh, of course, I like my birds, especially my great hawk, but the moss will get in them. My love, what's the matter? Why don't you talk? What's the matter? Nothing. Speak to me. Why? Come, sweet, come. Why so glum? Smile at Baba, who loving smiles at you. Do not frown, husband dear. Sit down. I saw, 
Still a long way from fulfillment. Here is the machine. It is true. But it must be manufactured in great quantities. It must be advertised. It must be sold. We shall need money and advice. We shall need partners. Merchants of probity and reputation in the city. Alas! Your admonitions are only too just, and they chill my spirit. For who am I, who am become a byword for extravagance and folly, to approach such men? Is this dream too? This noble vision? To prove as empty as the rest, what shall I do? Have no fear, master. Leave such matters to me. Indeed, I have already spoken with several notable citizens concerning your invention. And they are as eager to see it as you to show. Indeed, Shadow, how can I live without you? I cannot wait. Let's visit them immediately. <laughs> Tell the good news to your wife. My wife? I have no wife. I've buried her. Thank you. 
so many books of them, hundreds of sober merchants are insane. Sure, you follow me. Nay, las altra of auctions. Truly, there is a divine balance in nature. A thousand lose that a thousand may gain. And you, who are the fortunate, are not so only in yourselves, but also in being nature's missionaries. You are her instruments for the restoration of that order. We all so worship, and it is granted to so few of us to serve. <laughs> Let us proceed at once. Lots one and two, which cover all objects subsumed under the categories animal, vegetable, and mineral. <laughs> Who hears me knows me, knows me, a man with value. Look at this. What is it? Wit and profit. No one, no one could pay to conquer, pay to charm. Who had it by to watch? And who could not be a nimble panda? Having this, having this, having this before him. Bid, bid to get them, get them, get them high. Luck come bid, come by. Ha ha, the old witty, lovely, wealthy. Go high, luck some more. Come on, ha ha, the pike. Seven. Seven. Eleven. Eleven. Fourteen. Fourteen. Nineteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-three. Going at twenty-three. Going, going, going. Behold it, Roman marble, the man who has it. Has it forever? Yes, and holy, holy, curing the body, soul, and spirit. A gift of God, a gift of God. 
And not to mention this or the other More and more And so help me more And bid Oh, get them Oh, get them, get them, get them Come Pluck, come bid Come by for ha, ha, The past feel like turn Go I'll some more Come on ha, ha, The palm Fifty Fifteen And a half And a half Three quarters Three quarters Sixty Seventy Seventy Going at seventy Going Going Gone <laughs> Wonderful Yes, yes and now for the truly adventurous. An unknown object draws us, draws us near. A cake, an organ, golden apple tree, a block of copal, mint of alchemy, oracle, pillar, octopus. Who'll see? Be brave, perhaps an angel will appear. Come bid, Ten. come by. The eight, the display, the salvation. Go high, be calm. Come on, the world. Fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two, seventy-five. Oh, 
our friendship, but Nick, as you know, is a gentleman at heart, forgives your dilatoriness and suggests a game, a game, a game of chance to finally decide your fate. Have you a pack of cards? All that remains me of this world, and for the next, you jest. Fine, fine. Good spirits make a game go well. I shall explain. The rules are simple, and the outcome simpler still. Nick will cut three cards. If you can name them, you are free. If not, you choose the path to follow me. You understand. Let us begin. Well, then. My heart is wild with fear. My throat is dry. Come. Not think I dare, I dare not wish. Let 
You see, it's quite a simple game. To be met once in love or cards is dull. The gentleman loves sport, for sport is rare. The positive appalls him. He plays the pence of hope to yield the guineas of despair. Again, good Tom, you are my master yet. What shall I trust in now? How throw the door? Come, try. Your mistress wants be, be fair. Give her at least the second chance to bear the hand of shadow. The juice. She lights the shades and shows. The two of spades. The two of spades. Congratulations. The goddess still is faithful. But you have one more, you know. The very last. Think for a while, my Tom, where you have come to. I would not want your last of chances thoughtless. I am, you may have oftentimes observed, really compassionate. Think. On your hopes. Oh God, what hopes are The sim. The trick, the simpler the deceit, that there is no return. I've taught him well, and repetition follows him. The queen of hearts again shall be for him the queen of hell. Rouse yourself, Tom. Your trust. Soon will end. Come, try. Now in his world, now in my world, no he'll find no end and fortune. Gold are back to crop the spring's return. return and love the bad you return, now repent. Return, return, oh Oh, 
I wish for nothing else.
thou Venus, Venus, where art thou? The flowers open to the sun, the birds renew their song. It is spring. Every ring 
didn't. 